Hi, so I'm making this video because I don't want people to have to deal with the same frustration that I did. So um, this is the D-Bot N79 Ecovacs Robotic. Robotics. And this vacuum is awesome. And navigating, it's powerful. But after about three to four weeks of function, it will stop, seemingly stop seeing things and just ram everything. And I talked to Ecovacs customer service, and they say, "Oh, you know, we're at a loss. It must have um, the infrared must have gone out on it." Uh, and so they sent me a new one, and the new one had the same problem. And so they sent me a new one, and finally I thought, um, "I'm going to try to troubleshoot this myself." So I did. I figured out what the solution is, but first the problem. So I just set Dbot on auto. And it's a nice, lots of natural light in the room right now. Um, D-Bot's cruising around. Doesn't see my foot. Doesn't see that. Uh, what's really telling though is when it gets over to the white walls. Oh, it's coming back for me. Ah. box. I was going for a, a wall, a white wall. As uh, I'm sure you've seen in the advertisements or the cautions for any robot vacuum, if it's dark colored or thin, it might have trouble, etc, etc. Um, this has trouble with everything right now. I wasn't great about picking up the um, floor because I actually just wanted to show the infrared seeing things were not working. So, let's film that just for another minute. It's our shoe pile. Bam. So you can see so far it hasn't seen a uh, single obstacle. It, um, it's like the infrared's not working at all, right? So, I'm gonna put this on pause and pick up in just a second with the solution. Okay, we're back. Um, I am by no means a YouTube whiz, except I watch a lot of YouTube, so I guess that makes me pretty impressive. Um, so I'll try to do the best I can, but as you can see, the clear plastic gets pretty beat up. And one of the things that customer service will tell you is, yeah, it gets dusty and dirty, wipe it off so that the infrared can see through it. Um, well, that's not adequate. And because of my past experiences with having cheap cars that I needed to, you know, fix the headlights instead of having a car with good headlights, um, I knew about this wonderful thing called plastic polish. So a plastic polish that I've used in the past that I really like is Meguiar's. Um, this says it's even new and improved and I liked it when it worked before. So this is just Meguiar's Plastics uh, Polish. And so when you read the instructions on the back, it's pretty straightforward, but uh, you apply a small amount to a terry cloth towel. Um, what it does is has some abrasive agents in there, but just mild abrasive agents. And then you take that and that was a better shot I hope. So you take that and put it right on the lens, right? So make sure the lens gets covered. It's okay if there's overlap. Um, like with a car if you're going to do this on uh, headlights you would want to mask it. But where this just goes around bashing things all day and is going to get scuffed back up, I'm not too concerned if some of the stuff around it gets a little bit scratched, scratched from the abrasive, abrasiveness of the plastic polish. Sorry, I'm trying to polish plastic and talk at the same time. Apparently not very good at that. Um, and so what I do is I'll do that quite a few times 
all the way down the entire length. Um, I use clockwise and counterclockwise just because I feel like it gives a bit of better motion um, than going straight because uh, you know if you took sand and scratched it across plastic back and forth back and forth then I think you'd just be putting straight lines in it versus if you're going in a circle in my head at least I think oh it's clearly it's buffing it out anyhow so keep doing that back and forth it's really as much as you can handle well I shouldn't say that maybe you could handle like five hours um, I usually will do this for I don't know five or ten minutes just putting more on and putting my back into it really giving it a good um, Clockwise and counterclockwise scrub, add more when necessary, rotating the cloth to clean parts of the cloth uh, because the cloth itself will have a little bit of abrasiveness to it. Um, so I'm going to pause this and then come back in just a second to show you the results. Okay, and so I just buffed that for about five more minutes. The last thing that you're supposed to do according to the instructions on the plastic polish um, and Meguiar's plastics and every other one that I've used in the past says the same thing. So you take a dry, clean piece of the terry cloth and you just wipe off any excess residue. And so you can see there's no white leftovers. You just wipe it off. Everybody used it. This part, um, I make sure that I do pretty well because you know if it can't see through scratches I'm guessing it can't see through white plastic polish <laughs> very well either so um, and if you did a good job then by this point you could you actually are probably feeling a difference in how smooth the plastic is so it's uh, buffed out a lot of those ridges um, actually when I figured out this solution I had been corresponding with the same customer service agent at Ecovac. She was very helpful and very friendly. And I figured this out and I recommended to them that they either increase the size of this bumper, um, which only in retrospect I realized wouldn't work for things like uh, we have this entertainment system right here that has a, a lip that it wouldn't matter if the bumper was bigger because uh, the lip is actually above the bumper. <laughs> it's directly into the plastic. And so my follow-on suggestion was um, for them to have more of a scratch-resistant plastic, like uh, uh, plexiglass or, I don't, I don't know, something that resists scratches more. So I guess I said it right the first time. Scratch-resistant plastic. So, now that we're done with that, um, and I always, uh, anytime I have it flipped over or whatever, I oops, take the opportunity to clean off the brushes. And I know we're all sorely tempted when stuff uh, like this, you know, we take it out of the vacuum, look at it, and then throw it back on the floor for the vacuum to pick back up. <laughs> to give it another try. But, uh, you know, obviously, since strings are not good for any vacuum, including robot vacuums, I try to take care of it and put it in the garbage. It's got some stuff wrapped around the end of that one, so I'll clean that later. The roller with uh, the little cutting tool that they send with it, which is super useful. Um, I'll clean that up, but for now, that will be enough that I can show.
the before and after. Okay, so put back together, move then the Meguiars off the floor, move all my supplies, and go. Would you look at that? D bot slowed down. And he was inches away from the wall. Here's my foot. Still hit my foot. That's because it was dark. Oh, dodge the books. Dodge that. Dodge the box. Oh yeah, the dark carpet messes him up. Um, it is one thing that uh, the sensors won't change. But you see, you saw both the light shirt, which isn't even really a firm obstacle, and the light blanket. And off he goes. Saw the, the whatever that thing is, end table, the toy. So, as you can see from the before and after, Diva N79 has been fixed and it took about seven minutes and a twelve dollar or whatever this was ten dollar bottle of mcguire's plastics that is still 99 percent full and you can probably use for 20 years to keep the dbot n79 um plastic shield clear enough so that the infrared sensors that you see in there are actually seeing the stuff that they're supposed to see. Otherwise, they can't see through it. So, interesting aside, you can only see the infrared sensors with a phone camera. You can actually not see them with your rear eye. So, if you look at your D-Bot N79 or any other robot vacuum that has infrared, um, and you wonder why you can't see it, but you can through your camera, it's because your camera is capturing different wavelengths than your eyeballs can. So, super interesting. Anyhow, um, if it worked for you or didn't work for you, leave a comment uh, down below. And if you have any other suggestions about how to make this awesome, affordable, high-performing vacuum better, then feel free to share those too. All right. Thanks for listening, guys. Bye.